In this third video, we'll construct a very simple circuit consisting of a single voltage source, a single resistor, and a single capacitor. I'll then demonstrate how to perform an AC sweep on the circuit and do a transient analysis. The handout corresponding to this video can be found on the instructor's homepage or in D2L. The instructions begin at the bottom of page 3, with the schematic being at the top of page 4. To begin, we'll have to construct a circuit. To do that, we'll have to open up B2Spice. So we'll go to the Start menu, All Programs, B2Spice AD version 5, and select B2Spice version 5. This brings up our blank schematic. Now the parts that we're replacing, we'll start with the voltage source. Under Common Parts, if I click on Voltage Source, in comes a blank voltage source, generic voltage source, if I right click I can re reorient this by rotating it 90 degrees. Left clicking then places it into the circuit as we want and then I need to edit its parameters. We're going to be doing an AC sweep with this initially and for that we're going to need an AC source. So if I double click into this voltage source we get up the voltage source properties starts opens up with the DC and transient tab that is not the tab that we want we want to collect connect onto the small signal AC and distortion tab if we enter in 10 volts for the magnitude and click use we'll now have an AC source available for us once the voltage source is set up you can then place the resistor a resistor can be brought in simply by typing F4 I like to go up by two grid spacings and over by two grid spacings to place a component. We look at the schematic and see that this value is correct for this resistor. The last component we need to bring in is a capacitor. This can be brought in by going to the common parts menu or by simply typing C on the keyboard. We right click to reorient the capacitor and we're going to change the value to two nanofarads by double clicking into it and typing in 2N into the dialog. As always, a ground must be placed in the circuit by pressing F3. We'll complete the circuit by wiring the components together. To, entering the, to enter the wiring mode, we'll have to either hit W or click on the toolbar up here. We start every wire by clicking where we want to start and double clicking where we want to end. Repeat this process until all the components are connected. Now an AC sweep will give us the frequency response of the circuit. To perform an AC sweep, click on the test tab. Next to AC sweep, which is down here, we'll click on the basic box and then we'll click on Setup. The AC Sweep Setups tab comes in here. We have a start frequency and in the handout you see that this is to be 10 Hertz. So to select that we go to 10 and bring up 0 for a multiplier or no multiplier. We want 10 steps per interval, decade. I want the amplitude to have nothing on it. I'm going to select magnitude. And then we have a single test. Now we have preset graphs. If we click on preset graphs, we're definitely going to want a graphical output since this is going to be multi-valued for output. We see a whole bunch of different dialogues come up here. And by selecting down here, we can pull in decibel magnitudes. We can pull in raw magnitudes. We can put phase angles in degrees or radians. I click on OK. I want to uh, show you another way to go in and get graphs and that would be to go to common parts, click on probes, and we can put a voltage probe in our circuit. When we, automatic, when we put a voltage source in or a voltage probe in our circuit, this will automatically graph the output. So now if we go down to output results, make sure that we have graphs selected. We can go in here and check our preset graphs. They're right here. 
we have our magnitudes. Voltage probes are pressed, are added. If those were added, we can press Control Alt Delete or Control Alt P, sorry. And once the probes have been placed, we'll click on Run. And once we have that, you see the frequency response of the circuit is shown here. Now, this is not the traditional way of displaying a frequency response. As you see, there's a linear plot on the frequency axis. We can change the axis, axis by going over to Edit Axis. We'll select the bottom axis, and I will simply click on Logarithmic. Once we have that, you see there is a AC plot of the frequency response. Now, a transient response is the same type of graph you would see on an oscilloscope. We can use the same exact circuit, making some very minor changes in order to see how to do a transient response. And we start by changing the source. So I'll double click into the source. Under the DC and transient tab, now I want to select sinusoidal. And we see a whole new set of parameters come up here. Let's set the peak amplitude to 10 volts and the frequency to 100 kilohertz. Once we have those two set, we can click on OK. And now we see that the voltage source is changed to a sinusoidal source. To set up the transient analysis, we'll go back to the test tab and to all tests. I'll deselect the AC sweep and I'll go to the basic transient analysis and I'll click set up here. Now transient analysis as I said is going to give us the same output that an oscilloscope would. We have a hundred kilohertz source. I would like to see several cycles of our output. So at a hundred kilohertz our period is about 10 microseconds, exactly 10 microseconds. So to get four cycles arbitrarily chosen I'm going to type in 40 microseconds for our stop time. And when our stop time, our entire window here is about 40 microseconds, we want to choose a step ceiling, which is the maximum step size. Uh, we want to choose one that's small enough to give us a smooth plot. And what I find, for the most part, is going about 100 times less than the window, or 0.4 microseconds in this case, is enough to give us a smooth plot. Once this is entered, we can go down and click on Run, and we'll see the sinusoidal waveforms appear down in the circuit, or the graph for the output. So now we've seen how to do an AC sweep and a transient analysis. The previous two videos showed you how to do different types of DC analysis. We've come to the end of our handout, and this concludes our basic introduction to the most common tools that we'll use in SPICE. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.